be comfortable and swimming. Well, hello all. Today I'm building a stealth shelter that is above the ground and that can swing. I call it the Stevie Swinger. So, to do that, I've found a fork in this tree and I've cut down a, an alien tree. And I'm going to stick this alien tree in the fork like that. And that is going to form the basis of my shelter. The next thing I have to do is I'm going to assemble a bed that can hang and swing from this, this tree, this branch that I've cut down. So let's now make our bed. This is going to be the top of the bed. Notice how I've cut these to be at an angle like this, almost like a picture frame. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can use shorter screws to go through here. And we're going to drill a hole through here. So there, that's the one side of our bed. So there's the top half of our bed made. There's the main ridge pole that it hangs on. Here, this is swinging freely now, hanging from that rope. And then it goes all the way to the top. So we are going to now brace the corners with these braces. We're going to put that across the corner. Right, now that it's braced, we're going to take some shade netting and wrap it around here. Beautifully comfortable and swimming. How lovely is that? Well, we are camping here tonight. I've got my lovely fish uh, cakes warming up, which I've been cooking. It's the night of the full moon. It's around the equinox tonight days time and 
This is the Feast of Stealth Shelters. This is the first of seven nights in a row of stealth camping. It's been raining all day. You can see there's condensation. It's quite cold. But this is a special time. I've so looked forward to it for the whole year. And I love and do this every year now. And that is stealth camp around about this time. I think our fish cakes are done. So let's have some supper. Well, I do love my swinging bed. There's rain, been raining all day and it's gonna rain a bit tonight, I think. So at least we're above the dampness for the tomato sauce. We've got some plastic to protect us. The shade netting is lovely to sleep on. I don't think I'm going to need an air mattress. It's going to be cold, so we'll have a nice warm sleeping bag. I must say, uh, the dessert is what I've been really looking forward to. Wow, these fish, these fish cakes are delicious. Mm-hmm. Tin pulchards, onion, carrots. Garlic, a bit of flour we fried it with. Mm -hmm. But it's the dessert that I'm really looking forward to. So just have a look at this delicious dessert. I save it mostly for special occasions like this Feast of Stealth camping otherwise known as the feast of tabernacles or the feast of booths just have a look cherries on top chocolate cream when you get through the cream there's custard and then jelly mm, mm, mm. i normally only have that in the feast of the first and the last day of the Feast of Stealth Shelters because it's such a rich treat and it's so special and I'm just really thankful to have it. Mm. So supper's nice but dessert is marvelous. I feel in such <sighs> Good company. When I think that Jesus, Peter, James, John, all the apostles all kept this feast of tabernacles. It was one of the feasts that were customarily kept in September in Jerusalem. And Jesus would go up from Nazareth or Capernaum and keep this feast every year, as would all the disciples. There's no evidence that Jesus ever kept Christmas. Jesus never kept Easter. Jesus not, never even went to church on Sunday. But Jesus did keep certain feasts. He kept the Sabbath in his synagogue. And he went to Jerusalem to keep feasts like the Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. And there's stories in the Gospels about how Christ went incognito up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, and only in the middle of the feast was he found preaching in the temple and they realized who he was. Because this created a tension with the Jewish Pharisees who expected him to come up. Jesus tried to avoid Judea because of the Pharisees. But he, he is compelled to go up to the feast, the three feasts a year, at least a few of them. And um, that brought him into conflict with the Pharisees. Mm, mm, mm. 
Yummy. That is so delicious. So, there is... I mean, there is a reason why I keep this. I like to be in good company. I like to experience what it was like for Jesus and the apostles to keep these feasts. And there's evidence in Zechariah 14 that when Christ returns, it's going to be like a disaster with very few people left behind on earth, perhaps a tenth of the earth's population. And the, the nations, Egypt, the world, the Gentile nations are all going to come up and keep the Feast of Tabernacles from year to year, every year. And if they don't, they won't get rain. So, you can see that the Feast of Tabernacles is meant for everybody. Originally, it was meant for the Jews to celebrate that they came out of Egypt, and when they left Egypt, they left the buildings behind, and they had to dwell in temporary structures or booths like this swinging bed that I've made, or they, they built structures out of branches or what was available. And so it's a reminder of their very humble beginning as a slave people coming out of Egypt with virtually nothing. And when Christ returns, everything's going to be destroyed. All the skyscrapers are going to be thrown down by hailstones and earthquakes. There's going to be nothing left. And people are going to build stealth shelters or booths or tabernacles or little things out of branches and whatever they can find. And they're going to do this throughout the course of the millennium under Christ's rule to remind them of their humble origins that but for the grace of God they would not have survived into the millennium. So it's a time of rejoicing, it's also a time of humility to realize, wow, I mean, take the Israelites, if they hadn't been saved from God as a slave people, they would have never left and become a nation. And the living in booths was there to remind them of their humble origins. Just like all people who make it through into the millennium, we make it from this age into the millennial age, having, if you read the book of Revelation, all the plagues that strike the nations. You can see it's by amazing good fortune that you, you make it through. So, that will remind them of their origins. So being a feast for both Jews and Gentiles, and probably intended for everyone to keep at all times, but the nation of Israel didn't set a very good example, so not other, so other nations didn't copy them. In fact, the nation of Israel hardly ever kept its own feasts. But under Nehemiah, when we read Nehemiah 8, we see how they discover a book of the law and they discover oh we, this is a feast day this is a feast of tabernacles and then they go out and they cut branches and they celebrate and they have delicious food like this and they give thanks to god so one has to ask of all the things that god could have chosen why does he choose in Leviticus 23 to command Israel and then the rest of the world when Christ returns to keep a feast of stealth shelters where you build a little booth, a little stealth shelter and you live in it for seven days in the month of September or October. It just sounds so amazing 
that that is what God chose to do. In fact, it was Christ who, as the God of the Old Testament, was the one who implemented this. And it really is a joy. I look forward all year long to spending this time out. And although I wouldn't normally choose to come out on a night like this, I know I'm going to be fine. I've got my, my lovely swinging bed dry above the ground. And when you do it with lots of other people, it's like a whole festival love feast. Everyone shares what they've got. Everyone has the same difficulties, lives in the same conditions. It's very egalitarian. The rich and the poor all living in a shelter of branches. There's not any one person fancy or better than the other. You're all roughing it together. It is truly interesting and amazing. And, I mean, you're only supposed to make, or only commanded to make one stealth shelter, but because I like making stealth shelters, the swinging stealth shelter of mine is the first of seven. Every night I'm planning to live in a different stealth shelter, which I build. So if you like this stealth shelter, I hope that you're going to continue to follow and um, have a look at the rest of the ones over the next seven days. And it's a time of just being thankful for the food we have. Really it's things like food and raiment, clothes, just the bare basics that really people just need. And if we got those, we, we just have to be extremely super thankful. So I know when I pump up my pillow, when I, I've got a couple of blankets and a sleeping bag here, I think I'm going to be just so super comfortable. Just have a look at this if I can show you. I'm going to be so comfortable sleeping with this. My word. And it swings. Wow, that. Yeah, you don't need a pump-up mattress. It's just too comfortable for words. Ah. And I'm sure it's going to keep most of the rain out. I see one tear in my plastic, which I'm going to get some sellotape and sellotape it up sometime. But otherwise, I think I'm going to be good. It's going to be lovely tonight. 